Hello, AP Computer Science. Going to walk through a bit of a review of recursion. Remember, recursion is not going to be on the 2020 exam. There were multiple choice questions on it on every exam previous. There will be multiple choice questions on it on recursion on every exam coming forward, and every computer science teacher you have moving forward will expect you to know something about recursion. So, worth just doing a little review. So, here we go. First off, you do remember some recursion stuff from math, I'm sure. You know, find the first few terms of these sequences. Each term is the previous term plus 10. Start at 17. So that's easy. That's 17, 27, 37, and so on. Here, the first term is 24, and each term after that is the previous term divided by 2. 24, 12, 6, etc. Or one that you might be familiar with, start with 1 and 1, and each term after that is the sum of the previous ones. 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. Thank you to Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci. But you notice these recursive definitions go on forever, which is kind of a bad thing in computer science. So we move on to how to do it in computer science. You have if the, a recursive solution says, take the task and make it smaller. You have to have at least one base case. You have to have uh, a place where it stops, otherwise it goes on forever, like that one previously. And since a computer is not infinite, it cannot go on forever. It's trouble. So recursive calls have to eventually converge to that base case. You have a base case and you have to keep getting closer to it, otherwise you get into some sort of like real difficulty. So. All right, simple example, base case, you're climbing steps. Hey, if there's no steps to climb, stop, you're done. But recursively, step up one step and keep climbing. There you go, until you get to the base case, there's no steps left. Here's a quick one for factorial. You might remember factorial. You've seen that before many, many times. If n is 0, 0 factorial is defined to be 1, so you return 1. Otherwise, you return the number times the factorial of the number smaller than it. So each time you are getting closer to the base case. That's as long as n is a positive integer. Um, you are good to go. So let's walk through that with, let's walk through that. <clears throat> let's walk through that, thank you. Let's walk through that with factorial of five. Fact five is not zero, so it doesn't return one. Instead it returns five times factorial of four. Well, what's factorial of 4? Factorial of 4, 4 is not 0, so it's 4 times factorial of 3, which is in turn 3 times factorial of 2, which is 2 times factorial of 1, which is 1 times factorial of 0, and that one we do know, that one is 0. So this now becomes Give me my little dots down here. I want to change the color, thank you. So this now becomes one. And one times one is one. So this is one, so that gives you two. This is two, so three times factorial of two is six. Factorial of three is six, so four times factorial of three is 12. No, four times six is 24. And 5 times 24 gives you 120. So that's the way you would step through a recursive function definition. Just follow it, keep getting down, keep getting smaller, make it all better. Here's another one. Uh, my uh, Reverse a string. Good. Let's reverse a string. Let's reverse the string APCSA. Is the length less than or equal to 1? No, the length is 6. So return substring s.length minus 2. If you remember your substring, your string method, substring starts, if there's only one parameter, it starts with that one and goes to the end. Length minus 1 is the last character. Uh, length minus, or length minus 1 is the last character. Length minus 2. This is weird, it should be length minus 1. 
it should be length minus one. I got this from the textbook, but it's got it's just this should be length minus one because that would give you the last character. There we go, length minus one, um, and let's trace it. Substring length minus one, which is a, which is the final a, plus reverse. A P C S dash. This should also be one. Because it will stop before the last character. And so this will be and this will return dash plus reverse A P C S which will return s plus the reverse of apc and so on until you get down to just the string a which will return a and then the A and the P, and then you put all the pieces together. We've got a lovely A dash S C P A for your final answer. This would return P A. Well, there we go. We moved on. Uh, last one that we might follow. How many times does the string high appear in a given string? This one is, of course, from your favorite coding bed. So look for high. If there's no high in it, then you return 0. Otherwise, you return 1 plus the count of how many highs there are in the rest of the string. Cool? So for in this case, the case on the left, you would look at it would return. It does find high. It finds high here at 0. And so it's going to return 1 plus count high starting at the index of it plus one so that's going to include the i i low high low high and that's going to move on count high is going to return the word high does appear it's at uh, index three so this will return one plus i low high uh, count high of that, which will return one plus count high of whatever's remaining, which in this case is just going to be the string i, which has no count high, which has does not have the word high in it. So this is zero. That returns zero. This returns one. This returns two this returns 3. On the other hand, count high of hello on the right hand side goes straight to the base case because the string high does not appear in it, so it just plain returns 0. Cool. Couple more. Uh, just a little piece what's going on inside the computer. It is doing exactly what we just followed through. Um, it has what's called a runtime stack, sometimes called a system stack which keeps track of all the things that you've told it to do. Basically, it's like a lot of parentheses in uh, an arithmetic question. You're working from the inside parentheses, and the rest of the question is waiting until you finish those inside parentheses to get something done. So calling factorial 4 calls factorial 3, which calls factorial 2, which calls factorial 1, which calls factorial 0, which returns its answer to factorial 1, which returns its answer to factorial 2, which returns its answer to factorial 3, which returns its answer to factorial 4, which finally returns its answer. Uh, another one, if you have a file system, how long, how, how could you compute the total number of files? How could you compute the total size of the files? Well, the thing about a file system is you have a folder, and some of the things in the folder are files, and some of the things in the folder are more folders. So, there you go. Start with zero. For each item in the folder, if it's a file, add it to the count, but if it's a folder, call yourself recursively on that folder.
Last one. We can talk about this one on Thursday. Let's see if you have any good recursive solutions to this. Starting at that top left at that red two, always moving right or down, what is the maximum number of gold pieces you could pick up? So for instance, if you went this way, you'd get two, five, two and five is seven, eight, 15, 18, 20, 24, you'd get 28 gold pieces if you followed that path. If you followed this path, let's take a green path. If you followed this path, you'd get two, three is five, nine, 12, 21, 24, 26, you'd get 30 if you followed that path. And there may be more paths that follow right or down that get you even more gold. So that's the question. How would you find it? Think about that as a recursive possibility, and we can talk about it on Thursday. See you then.